Hi, it's Terry with the Covered Chipboard, and I'm here today with um, a new SVG file set that I've come out with. This is my um, miniature vintage cook stove, and I did this in chipboard a long time ago, but I had never gotten around to doing the SVG files for it, so that's what this is about, and um, I'm going to show you how to put it together. You'll find on my blog you'll find a post that will give you some more information and a materials list but basically it's constructed from um, Cricut black craft board and uh, some metallic cardstock and then some black cardstock so this is what it looks like there's two versions actually I did one version where you simply cut these shapes out and glue them onto your um, craft board and then this is a printable paper. And um, I have another version where I've actually used the machine to draw lines on a lot of the pieces. And it just adds a little extra effect. So I still cut them out. But once you put them on, if you can see, let me get this on here. There's actually adds a little line drawn around. It just adds a little different touch to it. Um, especially once you get black underneath here and it stands up a little bit. So that, um, it depends, you know, whichever option you want to do. The um, stack back here is uh, black cardstock. This is a printable brick paper, which I got off of Etsy. And there is a link to it on my blog post. Um, it's a really nice paper. It prints out very well. Now you will, because of the size of the piece, have to, um, and it's a pretty good size, you'll have to make sure that you print your paper in the correct orientation or your bricks will be going like this. So you wanna watch that. That's the only tricky part there. It's actually two pieces, this goes in the back. And <clears throat> I've used some um, distressing inks to just make this darker. So more on that later. Um, as far as this goes, uh, you might, I, there are extra pieces in there, what it looks like, but it's to get a thicker look here. And then I've used a uh, silver colored Sharpie um, to go around the edges of your chipboard here. And that's the only thing, oh, I've used these. This is a, just a ball chain. I buy it in a great big spool, and it's, I mean, I bought it like four years ago, and I still haven't even used half of the spool yet. But if you take and use just two of them, they make a really nice hinge for the side of your uh, doors here. I've also used them for knobs, using just one, and used it for a knob. So, um... It comes in pretty handy, and it's real easy to cut. You just use little wire cutters. I've cut it with scissors, so that's easy to do. That's the only other special things that I've used. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do is take this piece, and you're going to fold it on all of the fold lines. And this makes the base for the surround Oops, almost didn't get that one folded. Just fold all your little tabs in. And I've just used, um, I think it's Scotch, what? yeah, Scotch quick drying tacky glue to glue everything. So nothing special there. Okay, now, normally you would put this in a dollhouse or a room box or something like that, so the back of it is not going to show. So if you want, you can just add your tabs back here at the back. You can also glue them on the inside. It's up to you, whichever you want to do. <clears throat> so I'm going to start with this tab. Opposite the long piece. 
I'm going to glue mine inside. And you just kind of want to make sure that you get it straight as possible. This is all going to be covered with this, so it doesn't matter if you do get glue on it. Now, um, if you don't want to use the printable paper, you could um, use a stencil and go ahead and do fake bricks on this. So, that's up to you, though. I was thinking I had to be really neat here, but I don't. Which is good, because I'm not really neat. Okay, these are all going inside. Just kind of push them down when you put them in. Once you get it in, you can turn it over and then straighten everything up. It's a pretty quick project to put together. Um, what takes the longest is when you get to the um, all these little details that I've got over here. I always thought this would make a really cute uh, room box where you just, uh, maybe with a table in front of it, and you can just stick your finger in there like that and get those glued really easily. Okay, so that part's done. So now we're going to take this, and I've given you, there's a lot of extra back here on the back, so I'm going to cut some of it off because it's going to be in um, this one's going to go in a room box. So you're not going to see the back. So then I'm going to glue the front first. gluing it, go ahead and glue this top tab as well. I'm doing both at the same time. And I'm going to line that up. sure that I get it even along those edges there. And there we go. Give that a couple of seconds to dry. And then this top tab is going to just get folded over to the top here. We have to hold that for a few seconds to get it to stay. Then we'll go ahead and go to the side and the tab up there as well. Wrap it around and fold that little tab over. Same 
thing. Oops, that came off. Gonna have to do that. You could also use score tape on that front part. It might be a little easier. Or it might stay in place a little better. I don't know why this is being tricky. Sometimes it's a little trickier to glue this paper that you've printed yourself. It's a thicker, or what I use is a thicker paper. So it doesn't always want to um, stay. Okay, this little tab doesn't want to stay down here. That again. And it sometimes takes a little bit longer for it to dry. Now you can go ahead and just do your back pieces and that tab. to dry. And there's for the top pieces up here, I've used, um, it says black cardstock. What I've used is a, this is a basil, and it has kind of a, a glittery sheen to it. I'm not sure what, I've had it forever, so I, I'm sure it's still available. I just don't know what it's called. Okay, and then for this, you want to take and glue three of these together. How funny. Yeah, and there's there's three that are one side size or actually there should be I cut an extra one here. But there's two that are one size. I guess I did three. Is that the smaller one? Okay, there it is. I've got three of a larger size and three of a smaller size. So you want to glue them three and three. You could use brown if you wanted to on this. I just kind of like the black. So there's those three. And we're just, we're using the three pieces to give it some thickness since we're not making chipboard. You want it to have, to be thicker than just the regular paper.
then you're going to take your smaller ones and glue them on the top. And you want to glue them so that the back of both pieces are flush and it's centered from the left to the right. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that. But if you can see, hopefully you can see, here's the bigger piece and here's the smaller. Then you want to take, oh, I did get my silver pen over here. You can use your silver pen along these edges, just like this. If you want. Or you could use some white pigment ink. This that I'm using is close to my heart, White Daisy. I've had it forever. So you can use that. And that'll pick up the edges. And what I like about this is it can give it kind of a stone look. Once you use it all over the entire piece. So there, that's for the top. And on these pieces, these wrap around right here. So you may want to just use the one piece or two or three. I think I'm going to use two. I think three is going to be too thick. But that's just personal preference. Oh. Come on out of there, glue. Glue's being kind of stubborn today. And I'm going to also use the white ink on that. I'm going to do this up here so it's not... I don't want to get the white ink everywhere. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on first, I think. No, let's go ahead and do this first. Now this is going to fold. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of crease that. And here it's going to fold also, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of crease that. Oops, I can't hold on to things today. And you just want to make sure that this is right along that top edge on the sides and the front. Just a second, I need to grab my other ink. I'm also going to use, this is uh, Tim Holtz Distress Ink Black Soot. I'm going to use some of that along the edges here. 
along that edge. Get rid of that white edge that's over there. Turn it down the sides here. And again, I'm not going to see this back side, so I'm not going to worry about that. Okay. Stick my arm out of the way there. Now we're going to put this top part on. Just want to make sure that it's centered evenly on the left and right side. And then it's all the way to the back. And that's the top. So now we've got the top finished. So your other paper that you have fixed up is just going to slide inside of here. If you want to put some glue on it, you can. It's really going to stay. So I'm just putting just a little bit just to hold it. Just kind of fold it up and stick it in there and it'll flop down. And that's all there is to that. And this part down here, you don't have to do anything with because it's not going to show. <clears throat> now, if you want, you could add another set like this down here at the bottom. Um, I don't think I have those in the... Yeah, I don't. So that's pretty much all there is to that part. So we can set this part aside now. And um, I will tell you this, when you go to put your piece in, it's snug, very snug. You're going to have to put that in first, and then the left side, and then the right side. And just push. It's just really snug. So, um, don't think it's not going to fit. So, there's the first part. Um, the next part is making the um, this section right here of the stove. And then we'll put the bottom and tops on and then make the stove pipe. Okay, we're at the next part. Um, you'll find this piece. Now, this is the one that's drawn on. If you don't want to do the drawn lines, then you'll just have... Uh, all blank pieces and it'll be blank on the top but you'll find three of this size glue those all together and then the same for this is the stove top this is the uh, at the bottom and you glue all three of those together and that will um, take care of the stove top and bottom I'll show you in just a second And you just want to glue them together and make sure they're straight. I find it's always helpful once you get it straight to set it down and push on it that way. That'll hold it together good. just really like the draw lines on it. Once you get those glued together, you want to take your silver pen and you want to go along the edges. 
Now you'll remember this is recessed into the um, into the surround, so you don't really have to do the, all the sides. I wound up just doing most of it. Just be careful not to come over onto the top. And that's kind of another reason why you want to keep it as straight as you can so that your edges are even. I think I was a little off there. I'm going to trim this up. And it won't hurt if you get it off just a little bit. You can trim it up. It's still going to fit. One little sliver is not going to hurt it. Okay, same thing on this. Now do your edges. There we go. So our edges are done. Whew, I love working with Sharpies, but I hate the way they smell. <clears throat> I had to get a little sippy there. Okay, let's go ahead and fold all of these up. And if you want to use a bone folder, you can. I don't find it that necessary. on this. Just be careful when you use a bone folder, you can make it crack a little. That's where I messed it up back there. When I was pulling it off my mat, I wouldn't, <coughs> excuse me, I don't suggest a really sticky, huge sticky mat when you're working with this. Okay, so first we're going to glue these two tabs. Basically, you're just making a box. Again, you want to kind of try to be as neat as you can here. and precise as you can be. Kind of hold that for a few minutes and let it dry. I think with this craft board, you kind of have to do hold things for a few seconds. It doesn't stick quite as quick as cardstock does. Kind of fold these tabs down inward and you're going to glue these. And you can be a little generous with the glue on this craft board as well. Oops. Then you're going to kind of push these down in there to close up the box. Be careful, don't push it too far in. And then from the inside, you can secure your tabs. And I have noticed too, if you have some of this black soot um, and you get some glue on your project, you can go over it with that black soot and it'll kind of cover up. And go ahead and fold these in and add our glue to them. I try 
try to be really neat, but I have kind of shaky hands, so that's what happens, unfortunately, when you get older sometimes. Same thing with this, you're going to kind of bend these all inward and then poke that in to form another box. And that will catch. You can kind of push um, inward just a little bit and it'll catch up on those tabs and that will dry. There we go. Okay, so now there's our front. So we're going to decorate the front before we put this top and this bottom piece on. I just think it's easier. And for me, it's going to be these shapes that have the drawn lines on them. And what I did was, I've got... You'll have two, a plain one and a drawn one. There's a drawn one and a plain one. That's for the top. You'll have this strip that we're going to put down the middle, but we're not going to get to that right just yet. And then um, you're going to have your bottom drawers that go underneath and a, another piece for it. Oops, if I get a hold of it here, there's another one of these. And if you want, you can leave them like that, or you can add these pieces over the top. And you're still going to see a little bit of the drawn line. Not a ton, but a little bit. So, you know, that's kind of up to you whether you want to do that or not. I think I will probably go ahead and use them. Here's the one for that piece. And the one for that piece. And then, um, where's the center? There's two center pieces here. There's a little piece that goes in between, whoops. In between there. And there is this piece here. There's two pieces for it, the underneath piece and the top piece, and then there is a little silver piece that goes on top here. And then we have two handles for these, and there's some little tiny, um, so if you can see them over here, little bitty tiny things that you can use, cutouts you can use for knobs if you want to. Um, it's completely up to you. Another option that you have, I think there was another piece I'm missing. Or I guess not. I guess that's all of it. See, I wound up cutting this like twice. Trying to get things right. So I wound up with extra pieces. This I do. That goes with that. So with all these silver pieces, you have black pieces that will go underneath just to give it some more dimension. And these are extra. So we don't need those. That's right. Okay, so there's all of our little pieces. These will go on here. Um, these go on the front of your box. There's my good side. So try to find the, the good side. And um, again, all you do is you take your piece here, add glue, glue this one to the top, And then you can glue on your little silver piece on top there. And then on your knob, 
or your handle. If you want to take a, I'm just going to use a paintbrush and kind of roll it so it's kind of bent just a little. Then when you go to glue it down, you can glue just this top edge and it will just glue your top edge and glue it up and it will stand up a little bit to give it some dimension. So just roll it back and forth on your uh, paintbrush or any kind of a round tool until you get it curved like you like it. And it makes a little nice handle. Um, you can also take a black marker and go over the edges of it to make it look a little bit more realistic. So that's all that is. So you want to build that piece, the center piece, your other drawer or door. Um, build these two drawers and this piece. I don't have a piece that goes underneath here. Um, if you want this to stand up as well, just make a little black piece that goes underneath it. And then you'll put these drawers on first. And then you'll come back and wrap this strip just above the other two drawers. And then put your other ones on. Or you can put the drawers on, then the doors, and then add this piece, whichever. So I'm going to stop the video, go ahead and add my pieces, or glue my pieces, get them put on, and then I'll come back. Okay, inside the download folder, you'll find this extras file. And once you upload it, it's this one right here. This is what you'll need to um, use to make the printed or the um, part of the stovetop that has in front that has the drawn designs. If you're not going to do the drawn part, don't worry about this at all. You won't need it. But there's a couple of things that you need to do to it to use it. So it's going to come in all together, and what we want to do is separate these parts out. So we need to use a shape. <clears throat> so we've got our shape here. We're going to bring it over, and we're going to cover this shape that we want to cut out. And I'm just going to cut all of this bottom row out at the same time. So select everything, come down to the bottom, click Slice get rid of that that's an extra piece and there's that so now we have the two the two parts you can leave these two part well you need to separate those two so another shape I'm going to slice this part out get rid of that that's extra and now we have two independent parts you need to, to do the, or you need to do the same thing on this. So let's do shape, and I'm going to duplicate this because I'm going to need to. Yeah, that's not quite big enough. And slice. Let's get rid of that. Get rid of that, and now we have this shape that goes with this set, and this shape that goes with this set. And you can tell this isn't laid out the same way as this, so we need to slice some of that apart, too. So I'm going to do this. Whoops. I hate this mouse. It makes the screen jump around. If your fingers touch the side, I don't know why they made it like that. So sensitive. And now this part. Um, this... And this, I'm going to go in and change the color on them to green, just so it's easier to see. So now this part we want to bring down here, select both pieces, and do a line center. Now, we want to, um, if you look over here on the right, you'll see the slice result. This is for the cut, that's for the top, and this are the little uh, burners and it's saying cut on that also. We need to select that, come up here to cut and change it to draw. Then you need to select both pieces, right click group and attach. And now that piece is ready 
and it will cut out the shape and draw these other shapes. And you want to do the same thing on this piece. We'll take this and bring it over. It should fit right on top there. Yeah, that looks good. And now this piece will have to further cut apart. <clears throat> so that we can, we probably have to cut all three of those pieces apart. Get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. Whoops. that and now this piece is here. So just line all of these up and what this is doing is I've used a silver marker and it is drawing lines in silver on the black cardstock or craft board and it just makes an extra visual effect to your uh, project to the stove top. So then I want to take all of these little pieces. So it's these two and these three. So I'm going to select that, those three, and we're going to change them from cut to draw. And this one's been changed. This one right here, we're going to change it from cut to draw. Now they're all set. And then we're going to group and attach. So there's those two pieces. Um, this is your top of your stove and this is the front of your stove. And then um, that's a, the second option. The other option if you use this piece is to cut everything out and I use like a silver metallic um, cardstock. And then you can just add these pieces on top of the stove top which is over in this section here. And in this section, I want to mention that I do have extra pieces added in here. Um, you were going to wind up cutting a full sheet anyway, so I went ahead and just added some extras. If you want to make it thicker by stacking pieces on top of each other, you can do that. So that would be it for these two pieces. Now they're ready to go. And um, like I said, this is optional. It's completely up to you if you want to do it or not. You can go ahead and group this whole part together and attach it. So now you can move the whole thing at one time. And that's it. Okay, as you see, I've gotten a little further along. I've gone ahead and added my pieces, and you can see how they, with the black underneath, are raised up a bit. I did use the silver marker around the um, edges before I attached them. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've gone ahead and done my doors, and on these, I cut an extra little piece that was a little smaller of the black craft board, stuck it on there, and then you can see where I've used the um, the bead off of the bead chain as my handle. Um, I've cut for my hinges the little beads, and as an afterthought, I wound up, because I really like the way this... Um, basil cardstock looks like steel and I went ahead and cut a little piece it's in the extras file with cutouts for where all of these pieces should be glued and that'll help you place things as well as give it a different look and then I added my little strip it just wraps around all the way just right there and so now we can just go ahead and glue in our uh, little pieces. Let me get these hinges off to the side and just simply glue these in in the spots provided. Just gives you a nice little guide to go by and I like the look of it. I've used that cardstock a lot on a lot of things where I wanted kind of a metal or a steel look. Oops, I knocked that one crooked. I 
these little pieces go down in here. And this little piece. Oop, got a little heavy with the glue there. Okay, and there's this little piece. That goes right in there. Okay, I'm not going to put the hinges on yet because I'm going to go ahead and we're going to attach this to the base. Just gonna add a little bit here, and you just want to center it on that base. It kind of goes towards the back, will be flush. Here we go until the back's flush and it's centered over here and over here a little bit more. And you have a little bit of a lip on the front. The same thing with this piece. Make the back flush, and you have a little bit of a hangover in the front and on the sides. So you can see that now. Yeah, I've got it pretty good. And there's less hangover on the top than there is on the bottom. I'm just going to hold this for just a few minutes till it dries, and then I can apply my hinges. And your last piece left is this, which makes the stack. Um, and basically, you just keep rolling this around. Um, something, some round object. I think I used one of the Cricut pins. was worked out real well. And do it just a little bit out of a time until you get it curled up. And then I used um, score tape to attach it and glue. Okay, that should be done now. So for my hinges, see, I'm just going to add a little bit of glue right along here. And then I'm going to add, pick this up. You could probably do these with hot glue or a metal glue. And then you don't have to wait so long for it to dry. Whoops. That one stuck to my finger. This glue that I use does dry clear. So I'm not really worried about excess glue on there. Oops. Okay. So there's my hinges. So I'm going to set that aside and let that dry. Then I'm going to go ahead and make my stack. Okay, I just took my pen and laid it on the table, held onto the two edges, and then just rolled it around. And I'm gonna hold it there for a few minutes while it's holding. I'm gonna add a piece of score tape. Right here. Pull 
this off. This one came out much better than my other one. My other one's kind of creased. This one came out a lot better. And then I'm also going to put a little bit of bead of glue right here. And then I'm going to take and hold and roll it again. And roll it to secure that tape and the glue down. And I'm going to pull it out now. Now, one thing I can tell you, because this is going to be at the back, this crease is not going to show. But if you have a feeling that it's not holding as well as you would like, take a piece of tape, add a piece of tape to it. That will never be seen. here and there we go and that's our stack oh, it looks like one of my hinges fell okay and then you're just going to add glue to the bottom And I kind of add a little extra there on the inside because it'll fall down onto the piece. And then you're just going to lay that right, place it right there in the center. And let it sit for a few minutes to dry. Now, once we get ready, we can, this may fall off when I try to do this, but... I'm going to put glue back here on the back side, fairly good bit, and then I'm going to add glue down here on the bottom inside, and then I'm going to take this and stick it up inside there, and remember I told you it was kind of, you have to kind of push it in, kind of have to push it in and down. Push that back there. So now it's down all the way. Yep, got it down all the way. Because there's glue coming out of the bottom here. And I kind of figured that was going to happen. So I'll have to glue my stack on again. <clears throat> That might have been, this might have been one for a glue stick. I mean, a um, hot glue. There it is. I'll just set it up in there. So now you can see, there it is finished. There's the front with your little beads and the top. And that's all there is to it. So that's our project. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember, here's the other look if you want to just do this and not mess with the drawn-on pieces. Um, and that's all there is to it. If you have any questions, give me a yell on my blog or on Facebook. And I hope you have fun with this project. I'd like to see what other people do and some people do some real brick on it. Um, another idea, though, you could also add a little shelf back in here. There's enough room. Or you could add some utensils hanging from here. So, see what you can do with it. Have a great day. Bye.